Greetings and welcome to our latest edition of Farhang Foundation's Farhang Connect virtual talk series. I am Ali Reza Ardekani, Executive Director of Farhang Foundation here in Los Angeles. We are a member supported, non political, non religious, not for profit organization with the sole mission to celebrate and promote Iranian art and culture for the benefit of the community at large. Today, we are delighted to welcome you to our special presentation in collaboration with the Morris Museum on their current exhibition, Body Double, the Safarani Sisters. We are very pleased to welcome today's esteemed guest speakers, Bahare Safarani and Farzane Safarani, Iranian-born collaborating twin visual artists who now live in Massachusetts, known primarily for their innovative video painting and video performance art. The two sisters make dramatic compositions of themselves as a subject to explore to sense of self in relation to other. The Safarani sisters choose to incorporate particular themes and symbols in their work. A major theme that the sisters address is one of identity as twins and as individuals. Today, we're also delighted to welcome independent curator, Roya Khajavi. Ms. Khajavi is a cultural producer based in New York. She has largely focused on the work of young Iranian artists working both in Iran and beyond its borders, seeking not only to support their artistic endeavors, but to also facilitate awareness and cultural dialogue between artistic communities. Since 2008, she has actively led exhibition committee efforts around the art of the Middle East for such institutions, including the Guggenheim Museum and the Asia Society, where she sat on the steering committee of the critically acclaimed exhibit, Iran Modern. Ms. Khajavi co-founded the Institute of International Education's Iran Opportunities Fund and served as president of the board of the New York-based nonprofit Art General. She has been honored with the Women's Global Leadership Award by the Institute of International Education and an Order of Academic Palms by the French Ministry of Education. Our final guest for today's talk is Ron Labaco, Director of Exhibitions and Collections of the Morris Museum in Morristown, New Jersey, with a multidisciplinary interest at the intersection of art, design, and craft. As chief curator of the Morris Museum, he has organized the exhibition's Body Double, the Safarani Sisters, W. Carl Berger, Mastery of the Medium, and Aerosol, Graffiti Street Art, New Jersey, Now. He has held curatorial positions at the Museum of Arts and Design in New York, the High Museum of Art, in Atlanta and the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. His publications include Out of Hand, Materializing the Post-Digital, The Allure of the Automobile, Driving in Style, and Ettor Sotsas, Architect and Designer. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Bahare Safarani, Farzane Safarani, Roya Khajavi, and Ron Labaka. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and welcome to Farhang Connect. We're delighted to have you here today. Thank you. We're happy to be with you today. Hello. I will now step back and hand things over to Ron to take it from here, and I will be back shortly um, for a short Q&A at the end of today's program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Aloreza. It is um, a delight for me to be here and to be part of this important panel discussion. Um, I also do want to thank the Farhang Foundation and the audience, welcome. And I hope that you find today's program um, intriguing and enlightening. Um, we have at, on our panel, um, Oya Godavi, and Bahre Safarani and Farzane Safarani. So welcome to my esteemed guests. Um, I'll just begin with a little bit of background about how the Morris Museum became aware of the Safarani sisters' work. Um, it began 
uh, back in March of 2020, when our former uh, museum director, Cleveland Johnson, uh, who retired last year, first saw the artist's work at Roya Kadavi's projects booth at the Volta Art Fair in New York City. Um, subsequently, the museum organized a group of museum trustees to visit Roya's exhibition, The Safrani Sisters, The Sprinkle of Light in March of 2021 in New York City. And subsequently, we had initially wanted to borrow uh, a, a very uh, intriguing piece. Uh, the title is Beneath the Breath, and we wanted to include it in one of our galleries where we showcase really cutting edge art that is really mission centric. And our uh, mission tagline is art, sound, and motion. Um, but at the simultaneously, the board and our director was so engaged with the work that they saw at the exhibition that we ended up buying three works for the permanent collection. And it was really a strategic acquisition for the museum. We had suspended um, the acquisition of artwork for nearly 10 years, but this just really spoke to um, everybody who saw the work and we just wanted to share it with our audience. And so those three pieces went up on view. And as we were um, uh, discussing the acquisition of these works, um, we uh, invited the Safarani sisters to have an exhibition with us in one of our prime gallery spaces. And so that led to the exhibition Body Double, the Safarani Sisters, which opened on November 12th and which will be on view through April 24th. Uh, for those of you who have not had the pleasure of seeing the sisters work in person, um, we should, I guess we should explore the background of the artists uh, from the artists themselves. So, um, uh, where were you born and where were you raised? Um, either Bahare or Fazane, whoever wants to start. Okay, I, I think I should start. Yes, uh, we were um, born in uh, 1990 uh, in Tehran and we were raised there. We were raised uh, in a very uh, art lover family, very supportive family in art and um, since our um, early ages, we were always wanted to uh, create art projects, art crafts. And uh, since then our parents uh, realized how we, how we are talented and uh, how, we are, how we are interested uh, in creating art uh, and art projects. So they registered us into uh, different art classes uh, and uh, they, uh, our father always wanted us to follow our passion and become the best in what we are interested to do and what we are, are what we love to do. Uh, so um, at the age of eight, uh, 13, uh, we got to know uh, an Iranian artist and poet uh, whose name is uh, Farima Farhatnia and we, um, registered to her classes and uh, started to uh, go to her classes for about uh, five years. Uh, and we learned a lot from her about uh, different aspects in arts, different uh, uh, reasons for creating an art, different approaches to art, about the art history and everything uh, to create anything that we um, think that is important to become uh, an art piece. Uh, and um, so yes, our, uh, uh, our parents were, were very supportive. They uh, took us to different classes in music, in painting, in uh, art craft and everything. Um, and after that, uh, we, uh, we studied uh, at mathematics at high school but we decided to study art and take it more seriously uh, as, a, as a career uh, and went to the Tehran University. Um, so, uh, so at that early age, um, 
did you work together? Did you work independently? Because you're collaborators now, but um, when you were, you know, still um, sort of playing, just basically playing with the with the subject matter, um, what sort of relationship did the two of you as sisters have as creators? At that time, and um, I mean, we actually had no idea how collaboration could work between us. Um, so after we actually uh, went to the Tehran University and we studied painting, uh, we did our first collaboration for our bachelor degree uh, project. And that was the first time that we realized if we work together, everything is going to be much more better. And we had the same ideas and same uh, subjects that we loved. So uh, we started to share them together and they uh, were much more successful when we uh, collaborated. Okay, so um, so when you were at the, um, so I understand that you received your um, degree, your BFA in painting from the Department of Painting and Sculpture School of Visual Arts at the College of Fine Arts at the University of Tehran in Iran. But I also understand that you studied a multiple of uh, disciplines. Could you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, yes, when we were in Tehran University, uh, we took a lot of different classes in installation art, set design, performance art, and video art. And um, But basically, when we were studying painting in Tehran University, you as a painter, you have to learn how to paint. So it was very uh, academic. Everything that we learned, uh, I mean, that's where we actually learned how to paint. Uh, but then when uh, we decided to uh, continue our education, we wanted to explore more in those different fields like video art and, and performance art. So that's why we decided to uh, get our master's in uh, studio art. And um, we applied for different universities and we uh, decided to come to Northeastern University. And in that program, they offered different classes. So we were not only supposed to take painting classes. Uh, so that's um, when we explored those other fields uh, much more deeper and um, uh, we decided to uh, step into other fields and explore them more. I see. Um, is it true? I, I believe I remember reading in your CV that um, while you were in, um, in Iran that you participated in um, plays and performances, as well as exhibitions. Yes, yes. We actually did. Uh, uh, we, we did. We had collaboration with other students in the department of theater, and we kind of did a um, like. We had a, a theater group that we were directing that group, and we were like uh, taking dance classes. So it was a very more, much more like a. a ex experiencing those things, but we didn't take them serious as our own uh, works. That happened when we came here. Please. Yeah, um, so uh, in Tehran University, uh, there were separate, um, like separate um, approaches to art. So if you wanted to do a performance or you have to go to like a theater, you have to study theater. But here, we because we always wanted to engage with different uh, media and uh, merge everything together uh, we were interested to just uh, help other students in different uh, things but here we took it more seriously and uh, we created artworks that are multi-disciplinary uh, and so yes so in 2016 you secured your a master of fine arts in studio art um, at the College of Arts, Media, and Design Department at Northeastern University and School of the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Um, how did that experience influence your, your, your outlook? Um, I mean, our experience in Northeastern University, here actually we were much more encouraged to collaborate together. So. Um, that was the first thing that we realized that we should take it much more serious. And um, we wanted to um, kind of, we were actually encouraged to 
explore new things and add more things, more concept to our works besides having only those uh, very high technical uh, works that they're only paintings or very traditional. Um, so they, we, we got pushed and encouraged to explore those new things and not be afraid of to, for example, combining performance with our paintings or painting with videos, like, I mean, two or three different, totally different uh, materials. Um, so it actually helped us a lot um, that um, we become uh, much more um, courageous to combine these uh, different uh, materials together. Uh, were there any particular uh, mentors that you had when you were um, uh, studying in Boston? Um, yes, at Northeastern, uh, uh, we had an um, advisor, Professor um, Myra Cantor, and she was um, really encouraging us to like just create anything that we can imagine. <laughs> and she was very helpful in that. Uh, yeah. So, and I know you've also mentioned the Starn twins, that they were an inspiration oh, yeah. of sorts. I mean, I think it's intriguing, you know, you being twins, those artists being twins. Yeah, but that was that didn't happen at the uh, uh, SMF or School of the Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, we read about them in a, in a book, in a history, um, a modern history of art book uh, when we were in Iran. And they were kind of our role models because they were twins, they were collaborators, and uh, they had an impact in the art world. So we wanted to become like those. Uh, and uh, it happened that uh, when we were, we had a uh, studio visit here at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, and they came to this um, studio visit, uh, and they and we, that was the first time we met them. So between all of those, um, like, students that they visited, uh, when they get back to their studios, they wrote uh, for us that we really loved your work, we remember, uh, they remembered whatever we did, they saw in our studio, uh, and uh, they just, uh, so um, they really loved our work, and that was very, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it was very we, interesting. Yeah, after we got their email, we were really surprised that why they decided to email us, and because they had a connection, because they were twins, and we were twins, and they were also uh, studied at the same school, but like, uh, 30, 40 years ago. And um, we asked them if they can let us to uh, visit their studio. And they were actually very happy and they invited to their, us to their studio in um, North in New York, North of the New York. Mm -hmm. And um, when we went there, they had a like, big factory and they were like us. They were working together, but not talking at all. They were very focused. <laughs> Wow! Wow! How how um, exciting and what what a what an incredible experience. So um, so after you completed your degree, um, or I guess it was during your um, you did you when did you start working um, in not only together but combining um, video with painting? Um, video with painting. Um. So we, when we came here, we, um, as I mentioned before, we took a lot of classes in video art and performance, but we didn't realize that we can combine them at the beginning. And, um, but uh, our videos were very similar to our paintings in terms of composition, color palette, and uh, subject, and everything. So um, one day we happened to project one of our videos in to one of our paintings in, a, in our studio and they were communicating so well together. So we realized that, oh, there is a figure walking into our paintings and that figure also was painted. Uh, so we showed this, this work uh, in one of our critique classes and everyone was very excited about it. Everyone encouraged us to keep doing this. And since then we decided to make a specific videos for our paintings. So that's how we got encouraged to do that. And then we also uh, used performance art and combined that with video as well. And uh, that's all. I mean, right now we feel like we are very um, 
think that you're very successful in combining those two completely different um, teams. Like video is very digital, time-based, uh, the paint, traditional oil paint on canvas. Well, that, that's a really unique combination, which I'm assuming um, might be part of the um, reason how, Roya, you came to be interested in the sisters' work. Um, perhaps, um, can you tell us how, how you first learned about their work and why you um, uh, decided to really support them and promote them? Um. Yes, um, the first time um, I came across the work of the Safarani sisters was uh, by reading an article in Hyperallergic in 2017, when um, they mentioned the 20 best shows around the US that um, people needed to see. And one of those shows was in Boston, and it was organized by a nonprofit called um, uh, Now and There. And um, in there, um, they were um, mostly concentrated on a group of women artists and uh, these female artists um, with a mission that um, uh, through their communicative voice, they were exploring the power of female resilience and uh, creativity. Um, so uh, one of the artists that was shown um, um, in, in that show uh, were the Safarani sisters. And um, so I got very um, uh, excited. First of all, uh, they, they were Iranian artists. They were mentioned, they were recognized. And secondly, um, that uh, they were twins and they were working collaboratively, which in art is kind of difficult. As we all know, most artists like to focus um, on their work alone. And, um, you know, it's something that comes uh, directly from them. So therefore to do and share it uh, with somebody else is quite difficult. So after that, I went to Boston um, because the Safarani sisters were having a solo exhibition on Newberry Street. And um, I thought that it would be the best way for me to uh, get familiar with their work and to meet them. So I contacted them because I've been also following them on Instagram and uh, went to Boston. We had a great session. We, um, we went over the works that were shown and um, uh, we discussed um, their experience, their education, um, you, know, you know, how they were also um, founded um, through a different gallery in Boston. And um, uh, I was so taken by their work that I decided um, to give them a solo show in New York. And uh, for 2018, we worked together on uh, creating a show in Manhattan, in Chelsea, um, which was um, received with um, great enthusiasm. And um, the artworks were sold. Um, I mean, before even we had the show, half of the artworks were sold uh, just for me, um, you know, sending images and communicating to my um, uh, collectors. So um, that's how we started. Um, that's how my journey with the Safarani sisters started. Well, I'm just curious also, Roya, I mean, you do represent um, Iranian artists in particular, as well as artists from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, um, what has been this experience? What has it been like in general? And what are you drawn to and how do you pick artists and or artwork? Um, yeah, that's a very good question, and it's a very broad question, and I try to uh, keep it concise. I mean, um, I uh, personally have been a collector for the past uh, 20 years, and uh, I'm very familiar with contemporary art. I read a lot about it, and I have, um, you know, I have good connections with galleries um, and, and museums in the um, in, in the United States, as was um, described on my CV. Um, so 
the first time that I really thought seriously about curating and working with Iranian artists was um, when I went to Iran after 30 years of not being there. Um, and I uh, visited with um, uh, many galleries um, and through um, the works of the artists that I had enjoyed, uh, I made studio visits uh, and I went and uh, met them um, found out uh, about their life, about their education, about um, their practice. And uh, I decided that I would um, bring that to the United States because, um, uh, as you know, there are many very famous artists in the United States, uh, Iranian artists that have um, been um, focused on and that have had major shows with um, established galleries and um, museums. But um, the art from Iran, uh, and I'm talking about contemporary art of Iran, is not very well known, um, even in New York, which is the center of contemporary art. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would work with young artists, bring their work from Iran uh, to the United States and create exhibitions um, and um, show the works of these artists because I felt that, um, you know, during periods of tough, um, tough existence, um, the creativity of artists um, uh, increases. Uh, and from what I saw in Iran, I was blown away um, in all different mediums. Um, so I started working directly with Iranian artists from Iran. And then uh, I, through my contacts, through Instagram, Facebook, through uh, my website, a lot of um, artists from, uh, the, the diaspora in uh, in the United States, Europe, and elsewhere started contacting me, and and I felt like okay, um, this was not just fair to only represent one segment of the Iranian populations, um, and so I would really contemplate on working with artists in the diaspora as well. And I must emphasize that I work with um, emerging artists, young artists, artists that have just basically graduated um, from, uh, uh, have finished their master's uh, programs and have just entered the art world. Um, and um, so that was um, for me uh, very exciting. Um, because um, I met many, many different um, genre of work, um, and um, uh, but all of them at the same time extremely powerful and strong. Um, whether it was in photography, mixed media, video, um, installation, um, and uh, and performance. Um, you know, I I, uh, I started putting many exhibitions together. Some of them were solo exhibitions, and some of them were group exhibition thematic, and um, uh, they were extremely well received. And we got good press. And little by little, um, you know, uh, th this business uh, of mine and this uh, project of mine grew. Um, from uh, just doing a couple of uh, exhibition a year to um, doing many more and uh, attending art fairs um, and uh, growing that way. Well, it sounds like you know, all of those, the multitude of disciplines that you're interested in really sort of dovetails with the sisters' um, uh, creative process. Um, so, um, Bahari and Farzaneh, um, perhaps you could let our, not, our audience know a little about your creative process, which is really distinctive and unique. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so like any artist, they, I mean, we have um, like some concern that we would like to create an artwork for that. Uh, so in our uh, artworks, we uh, we both together um, have some sessions that we talk about the different aspects of the body of the work that we want to create, like uh, the meaning, the the concept, the uh, the subject that we are creating. 
uh, and after we do a lot of um, like uh, sketches together, we share our ideas uh, and we decide on uh, what we want to paint or what we want to like um, create as a performance or video art. Uh, and uh, we take a lot of pictures uh, for the ideas from the interiors uh, that we leave or uh, some other places. Um, and um, when we take pictures, uh, we sometimes combine the pictures together uh, and we like add things to the pictures um, or uh, eliminate some part of it to uh, get the composition that we want. Uh, and uh, we start to, uh, if it's a painting, if it's a large painting, we both start to do the drawing together, uh, add the first layer of, layer of the paint and uh, finish the painting together. Or if it's a small works, uh, we sometimes uh, work uh, separately. I work from my home, she does from her place, uh, and we um, meet each other to both uh, be satisfied with the final project. I, uh, if I may add something to that about um, the creative process of the Safarian sisters, um, um, what really also drew me to their work, besides the fact that they were very talented, they were uh, doing something that was quite new and um, that they were twins and collaborating together, um, at a time when most of the visual artists, um, graduates from the very good schools, um, were focusing their efforts on conceptual art and, um, you know, abstract, um, uh, to find two artists that are amazing painters um, and uh, that have been extremely influenced by um, the Renaissance style of painting, especially like the golden age of Dutch painting with all the interiors and the colors and the mood of that period. Um, and to be able to combine it with video, which was a very new concept, um, uh, it really um, had an effect on me because not only there, uh, this, this, this um, uh, over, um, uh, lap of these two medium was very attractive, but uh, the work, uh, the paintings on their own were incredible paintings, um, and uh, they can stand on their own without even um, having the video uh, projections on them. So um, that to me was incredible that, you know, these two young artists that at that time were like 27 years old, uh, just out of school, were um, so mature in their artwork and so mature in their uh, practice. Thank you, Roya. Um, it's... Um... You're right, everything that you've um, said is what makes the uh, sisters' work um, really unique. Uh, perhaps we should discuss um, uh, and, ex and expose our audience to some of the artwork. Um, I'd like to start with a piece from 2020, Sprinkle of... It's, um, it's of an interior, and um, I think that... We usually, um, when people think of your work or have seen your body of work, uh, the figure uh, is prominent um, in either the painted figure or as a video element. But in the sprinkle of light, I think it really captures um, what um, Roya, you described in terms of this painterly quality of the artwork itself, as well as this more subtle sort of layer of of motion that's barely perceptible but basically the the video simply enhances the painting um would you like to um, discuss uh this further uh bahare or farzane um sure so actually in some of our paintings we have a person a figure in our painting and in some of them we don't um and sometimes when we don't have a figure in the painting, we usually the a video projection that shows a person enters the painting or engages uh, with the, the painting. Or anything that's the painting. But um, 
but the, in the sprinkle of light, there is no figure, not and not It's only uh, it shows a bed actually where you're supposed to rest, and uh, the whole window behind the bed. Uh, although there's no figure, but you can still uh, feel that feel the existence of someone in that house. So that's the only that's our that was actually our goal to feel the existence when there is um, or feel the life when there is no a life figure in the painting or in the video. And this specific piece is actually the video of that is um, around I think thirty minutes. So I we wouldn't call it like a video painting, it's more like a film painting. So you have to actually uh, sit on front of it and uh, for 30, 30, for 30 minutes, uh, it shows the sunrise to the sunset and you, things that you usually don't take your time to uh, watch. And uh, when you frame it on front of you and when you put a, like a bench on front of the painting, you realize the beauty of the sunrise and sunset and it's so meditative and it's something that everyone has uh, in their houses and they don't realize it until they they are supposed to watch it and um, in this specific painting the lights that that is coming through the window to the house it's like bringing hope it's like um, you know there is a lot going in in the world outside right now but uh, like having those little hopes in our life helps us to uh, be able to continue our life in uh, this hard situation now. Well, it sounds um, like you know that the there's symbolism in these interiors. Um, you mentioned sort of the, the light coming through. There's the subtle sort of undulation of the curtains, barely perceptible, but just like very um, engaging. So in um, an earlier piece from 2018, Twilight Reincarnation, um, the curtain figures prominently um, and there are two figures that are um, on the painted surface and then there's a third in the video element um, I find this really engaging. It's, it's you know, it's the both of you. Um, and I think that uh, it, in the context of this idea that you play with, with um, a protagonist or an avatar whom you follow uh, through narration over the years, with these three characters um, in this sort of, staged sort of choreographed scene perhaps you can um tell us a little more about this piece oh yeah uh, actually um in this piece as it's called twilight so uh it's you know it's a, a subject that we don't know which one is the real one uh, but uh, we didn't mean actually to paint both of us it's just one one person one subject that we have created and uh, we both are contributing to the you know to the uh, personality of this subject uh, and this uh, and in this piece we have painted it twice and we show that in the video uh, but it doesn't mean that it's two person it's one person that is uh, reincarnating again so like uh, it's uh, yeah it's it's about the one person who has two different appearance. Yeah. Okay, very. Um, it's it's um, beautiful. I mean, I like the tension between the you know the static figures, and then there's that dramatic motion and that sweep of the of the figure that um, you know uh, draws the curtain across the surface. Um, your I'm sorry, did you want to add something? Uh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, um, because I think that your, your, um, the paintings, you know, over the years include, you know, involve um, uh, some more motion, others, um, uh, you know, maybe a little more subtle. And I like the way you sort of, that interplay weaving in and out. Um, 
and um and I did want to um, bring up something that you have mentioned, and it's the idea of using um, the following this one figure and her transformation and her evolution, but also I, I find it really um, intriguing that you serve as each other's models when you're painting or one of you serves as the director and the other one as an actor when you're doing the video performance and um and it's this uh persona who is really um i think evolving and responding to um her environment um Roya, did you perhaps want to? Yes, I want to add that? to that. Uh, actually, it's a very good uh, time to to talk about this um, idea of like moving and growing uh, as artists and and showing this growth with your work. Um, the Safarani sisters always do these very large diptych paintings as part of their exhibitions every time. And they're about 10 feet long by like six feet um, tall. And uh, uh, they're sort of like a, this lying figure of a woman. Um, and uh, the first one that I saw was called, uh, in 2017, was called uh, Asleep. And then the second was called um, Awake. And the third one in 2020, uh, my last uh, solo with them was called Aware. So I think it also um, shows the different um, period of the lives of the artists when they came uh, from Iran uh, unaware and uh, unfamiliar with their surroundings. So that could say that they were asleep and then they were awakened by um, getting familiar and knowing what their surrounding is and how to react, how to be part of this artistic society maybe. And then um, the last one was awake, that uh, aware, which means that uh, they are um, completely uh, in sync uh, with um, what's going on and have almost matured in their artwork. And um, one more thing that I wanted to add is that um, the Twilight Reincarnation, which is a beautiful also diptych painting, which you referred to, um, uh, that was painted in 2018, is acquired and make is part of the um, uh, collection of um, uh, one of the good great museum in Massachusetts called the Peabody and Essex Museum. And um, to be this young and to be already uh, acquired by three museums. Um, um, the Peabody Essex Morris Museum and Museum of Fine Arts is a great um, a great um, stamp of approval, I think, for these two young artists that um, their work is excellent uh, to museum level excellent, and that they have um, really created something fantastic here. Yeah, yes, that's very important to point out. Um, I do want to then extend this idea that you've uh, mentioned of this sort of prone figure on you know large scale to a piece that's in the current exhibition, um, Umbilical Cord from 2021. And in this piece, um, Farzane, maybe you can um, discuss it a little bit? Uh, sure. This one is actually going to be the fourth painting that we are doing in this scale, and there's a figure uh, laying down on the floor, uh, but this one called is called umbilical cord. There is a red cord that is connecting that person to uh, somewhere that in her imagination, and it represents the rebirth of the person. And uh, that person is kind of giving uh, birth to herself every day, uh, and she's kind of a new person. Uh, that day, and she's experiencing the world with her new perception of the world. So it's not something that she's 
living into her past and um, uh, not enjoying the life enough. So uh, this idea of either reincarnation or reverse uh, is the center of this painting. Is there anything you wanted to add, Bahre? Uh, yes, and uh, this uh, red cord that um, is hanging from some nowhere and she's holding it is representing, uh, so as my sister said, the umbilical cord and uh, also uh, a, a red line as a border uh, that she tries to every day that uh, that she is born uh, expand it uh, uh, as far as this uh, red line uh, uh, disappears. Uh, so her safety zone would be as uh, big as no one can hurt her. It's, it's very interesting. You um, with the exhibition here, you created new work and you brought in this um, this um, visual element of this red cord that you refer mm -hmm. to. I mean, both not only in the painted surface as well as the projected surface and physically in the installation itself. But just to go back two years ago, I, as I was going through the exhibition just yesterday, um, the piece um, from 2019 Puppet Dance um, also has sort of a tightrope that is a red line. So I, I, I like that sort of that connection and the evolution of that element. Um, yeah. And perhaps um, one of you could discuss uh, this piece and in particular how it relates to the idea of to your, um, the performative aspect of your artistic practice. Um, sure, this piece actually is in a, like a, a real scale like life size, so we actually did that performance to hide that red curtain, both of us together and trying to play with the puppet that we made. Uh, so this is also actually um, representing that we um, are teaching ourselves how to be in harmony with everything that's happening around the world. So puppet dance actually um, represents that idea that characters which is us are teaching that character inside us to uh, like dance with dance with your your problems for everything that happens and she's learning to walk on on this uh, very narrow line and the whole painting large scale red painting that kind of represents the room that that this person is being born again and I might add here um, that this 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 line, this um, sort of um, protective limitation, uh, is often um, occurring in the works of artists that are not from uh, a country. You know, that artists that have immigrated into a new world. Um, and it is as much a personal feeling inside uh, these uncertainties, fears, uh, protecting themselves against uh, the environments and um, the outside world and what is unknown. Um, and um, it is as apparent in their emotions, as I said, as it is in their work. And um, to be able to see. Um, a sort of um, uh, continuation of the theme in the artist's work is also very appealing and what makes their work and their practice really strong when you see that, that an artist is sort of moving along the same uh, body or ideas and growing it. Uh, beautifully as opposed to jumping from one thing to another and uh, as a curator I really uh, look into that um, uh, as a strength so um, one of the uh, first thing that I um, look at um, in, in um, 
working with an artist is um, how I connect with their work and how this work has been continuous and growing um, and uh, um, how um, ambitious the artists are in their work and how strongly they're capable, capable of communicating through their artworks, um, to their audience and how they involve their audience as like, the third element into uh, their work um, and the communicative force of their work is extremely important with, for me. And um, at the same time, I feel like um, an artist that is growing um, and um, is also dedicated to a genre of practice and a mentality of work, um, should have um, curiosity, eagerness, awareness, um, somebody that does a lot of research, um, somebody who reads and attends shows and goes to museum and is familiar with arts, artworks of other artists um, and not just sort of, um, you know, boxed in into their own world. And with the Safarani sisters, I immediately saw that because I felt that they knew art history really well, that uh, they really had a strong point of view. Every time I asked the question, the, the two of them um, would be totally in sync in the answers they gave me, which meant that um, they were extremely... Uh, aware of what their practice is going to be and what they want to do. And I think these are all strength of strong artists. It's, it's very important. It's um, very observant of you, Roya. Um, I think that um, perhaps we'll look at one piece or make a, a, um, a transition and maybe like from puppet dance where you, Farzane, had explained that you were conducting this performance behind this curtain. Um, you have an upcoming performance here at the museum in which you pull away the curtain. Um, perhaps would um, either uh, Farzane or Bahare, would you do, or both of you, would you like to perhaps elaborate on this performative aspect of your practice? Uh, yeah, so um, so for some sometimes when we think that we need to like create a performance for a subject, uh, we decide to make a performance uh, beside the painting. So this uh, performance is kind of like um, a continuous version of the uh, the red line that we have used in our uh, installation and the paintings. Um, so. In the performance, uh, we are using these uh, sculptures that we have made, they're like uh, cubes, and they are also like defining uh, the meaning of the border and the safe zone of every person. Uh, and we, we are like three performers that we are going to like kind of get to a metamorphic uh, fight that we want to like destroy each other's uh, safety zone. Uh, and at the end, we come into a peace uh, and we uh, throw away those boundaries and we become together uh, happy and safe. Um, yeah, so. So like all the American films, it has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we'll, so, uh, so ending on that note, um, I think it's time for us to take questions from the audience. So, um, welcome back, Aloreza. Hello, thank you. It has been fascinating listening to your conversation. We have a um, bunch of questions coming in. So uh, before we run out of time, I wanted to hit some of the questions coming from the audience. So without further ado, let's get to them. Um, uh, as sisters, how do you work together on one piece of artwork? You kind of touched uh, based on this, but we got this question a lot. Do you each have a specific role in each artwork or is it more of a fluid collaboration? Uh, I think it's more of a fluid collaboration. We both have skills. 
but uh, when it comes to working together, some of I mean one of, of one of us has to become a model, the other one was behind the camera. So that's how we split our duties. But in terms of uh, painting, no, we both uh, if if the, the artwork is large, we both work at the same time on the piece. And sometimes we work separately. That's wonderful. Uh, I think that's been a very fascinating question for a lot of people about how you collaborate together as sisters. Um, another question we had is how, how are, uh, what are the challenges of working as a team and presenting yourselves as one artistic identity while still expressing your individual identity? Well, I think this, this has been a kind of result for us because uh, we, um, we don't think that we are actually collaborating together we think that we are uh you're one person that uh just working faster or you know deeper <laughs> into the subject that we create um so so we had like kind of challenges uh sometimes that uh, i disagree on, on something and she also disagrees or on the other thing but we both uh talk about it a lot until we both are satisfied with something and we don't have any uh, like any problem or anything that we're just known as Stafford and sisters. We don't want to be like this work is done by me or this work is done by my sister. Uh, however, it might have uh, happened. So yeah, we pre sometimes, present. Yeah. Sometimes if if I do a, a, a painting totally by myself, and uh, because because the whole process of me coming to this point to do this painting, Bahara is always involved. So I cannot say that it's the only the work done by me. So she she has an influence on my work. So that's why we call it the work by Sapphira sister. <laughs> I mean if if I have to clarify a little bit, I mean conceptually they're so in sync that whether one work is made by one or the other, I mean the result is the same. It's like either of them can do it and then the other one would enhance it so sometimes they work totally collaboratively on a painting like literally one starts from one end in the other one starts from the other then and they finish the painting together and then one sometimes you know one does the painting uh, of the smaller works and the other one does another work and then when they uh, work on the videos they they are working extremely together to make it happen but um they are so in sync it's like almost telepathic uh, I, I cannot really explain it until you see them work together but it's quite fascinating i think that's part of the twin power too yes probably <laughs> Uh, another great question we got is, uh, do you feel growing up in Iran where women are sometimes artistically silenced has influenced your perspective in your work today? Um, probably not directly, but uh, I mean, we cannot say that the place that we are coming from, it's not influencing uh, our current life or our works. And I think that happens for everyone. It's not related to us coming from Iran. It's just the thing that comes with moving from one country or immigration. Yeah. Great. Uh, I think we can wrap things up with this last final question is uh, thank you for this wonderful talk and for introducing us to the Safarani sisters. Um, do you ever envision um, to expanding your subject to the male form or do you only currently see a connection with focusing uh, on uh, the uh, feminine form? Uh, perhaps we don't know because because the subject is someone that is living with us, so it would still be <laughs> someone. It's, the, I mean, but it's us, but we we haven't we, we never decide what we are going to do. It comes to ourselves. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, again uh, to um, you, Ron, and Roya for facilitating today's talk and for helping us present this wonderful conversation in collaboration with the Morris Museum. Uh, and of course, a special thanks to Bahare and Farzane uh, Safarani for being here today and for enlightening us on their powerful uh, artwork. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. Pleasure.
It's our pleasure. Uh, I want to remind everyone that Body Double, the Safaroni Sisters, is now on exhibit at the Morris Museum in Morristown, New Jersey, until April 24, 2022. So if you're nearby, please go and visit and see this beautiful uh, exhibition in person. We would also like to remind everyone that today's talk was recorded and will be made available on farhang.org, as well as across all our social media platforms this coming week. Uh, as always, we extend a special thanks to you, our dedicated audience who are joining us from all over the world today. Uh, stay tuned to farhang.org for all our latest upcoming talks and events, and we look forward to welcoming you again next time. For now, we bid you farewell and goodbye until next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.